veteran. Grey tracky, grey tracky. She loves a gun, man, I stay tracky. I want a black night test, she told me change it to the grey. Bay, I love it when the dick's on display. She said the dick make a day. If I ain't swallow it, I'm coming on your face. I want a black. She hit the nail on the fucking head. Thank you so much for saying it like this. Um, when you talk to communists, you know, it's pretty much fundamentally um, consistent across the board. Like when we say everybody gets fed, everybody gets housed, you know, everybody has uh, an education. Like the American political party system is always trying to carve out an exception. Um, and they're like, what do you mean everyone? You know, and they'll try to be really hyperbolic in their responses to get you to defend your position. Like, what about these people? Um, you know, what about these criminals? What about these homeless? Like, there's always an exception. And, you know, the answer is always the same. It's like, no, everyone. Everyone means everyone. Um, and that is exactly why. Thank you so much for this. Fuck. Fuck. Hold on. Okay. Fuck. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Almost there. Almost there. Just a second. Hold on. And better. Ce qui veut dire que nous devons donner à chaque femme un emploi. Nous devons donner à chaque femme. Le moyen de gagner honnêtement et dignement sa vie. Why are so many Daily Wire conservatives just failed theater kids? This is a whole thing, and once you see it, it is impossible not to notice Ben Shapiro, failed screenwriter Steven Crowder, I think he's like a failed comedian or something, Michael Knowles, failed actor, Candace Owens, failed, you know, just failed media person. And um, because, you know, right-wing media has no standards uh, whatsoever, uh, it's a perfect place for people who have failed to make it into their chosen uh, entertainment vocation and play a different role. In this case, horrible chuds who advocate terrible things that harm a lot of people. But yeah, it's a whole thing. Uh, lots of failed theater kids, I guess, in the conservative media world. By popular request, here is Rose. Hi, Rose. Hey, how's it going? Gonna go back to what I know. Gonna go back to what the fuck I know, man. What happened was we reached the moon, but lost in space. I think we got there all too soon. But you know what? I'm coming back for you, baby. I'm coming back for you. Like this one fits so perfectly. Like I remember wearing this exact same like brand of t-shirt when I was in elementary school, which was the age that I started getting bullied for being fat and also the age that I started dieting. And I just wish that I had been able to see like a beautiful fat woman wearing the clothes that I was wearing. And it's fucking annoying how things don't change and like 15 years later, people are still getting made fun of for being fat. But like eight year old me feels so fulfilled seeing her wear this shirt and it makes my heart happy. I don't I swear to God, if I hear another take like the one I'm about to share with y'all right now, I am going to absolutely lose it. If you believe bullcrap like this, please shut your mouth. Do not speak on issues ever again. Just be quiet. You are incapable of actually having productive and informative educational conversations that can actually benefit the world and benefit progressive movement. The take is. Men cannot be feminists. But it doesn't stop there. When you are a man and you are trying to be a feminist, what you're trying to do is you're trying to co-opt the movement. 
and that if you are a man who is posing as a feminist, then you are a LARPer. First off, I'm not even a man. I'm non-binary. But I do understand that I look, that I look like a man. But this really pisses me off because if you actually had any sort of knowledge about actual feminism, you would know that actual feminism is intersectional. That it is not a gatekeeping sort of movement. It is a movement that first and foremost is for gender freaking equality. And I think that if you actually knew that, and if you actually thought about the shit that comes out of your mouth before you freaking say it, you wouldn't have said that take. Also, there's the very important fact that a take like that is rooted in first, maybe also second wave feminism. First wave feminism being the, well, first wave of feminism that primarily focused, not even primarily, exclusively focused on the not even full liberation of suburban white women in America. That is what the first wave of feminism was about. And what these women did was they excluded everyone else and just want it to be equal mainly to white men. The more modern, more modern waves of feminism, the true and accurate waves of feminism are about inclusivity. They're about equality regardless of gender. That is what actual feminism is about. And I feel like anybody that says that you can't be a man and be a feminist is only trying to give way or give validity to men's rights activism. But I'm not done because I'm also very much sick of whenever somebody like myself who actually is devoted to the causes that they fight for, when someone who actually gives a rat's ass and a half about somebody else, whenever somebody like that surfaces, there's always somebody in a freaking corner to say, well, you're just virtue signal. Just because you don't have a pulse and just because you don't care about other people doesn't mean the rest of us are like that as well. White people, I have some bad news for you today. No one may have told you this before, but I'm gonna tell you. Everything is not for you. You can't have everything. You can't take everything and make it into what you want it to be. You can't take our words, our lingo, our culture, our ideas and whitewash it and make it into whatever you want it to be. You do this with reverse racism. You do this with banning books, banning CRT. Even though you don't even really know what CRT is, you do it with our words. Think about the words woke and intersectionality. You do it with our dances on social media. Don't even get me started on that one. The list goes on and on. Just stop it. Stop trying to take our words, culture, and ideas, whitewash them, and give them new meanings that are inaccurate, inappropriate, and soaked in anti-black racism and misogynoir. It's really gross and insulting, especially when you do your best to disassociate our words, ideas, and culture from us, the ones who are the original creators of them. You need to stop, effective, immediately. Do better. If you want to learn how to stop causing harm and have conversations about race and racism with confidence and compassion, join my five-day anti-racist conversations confidence challenge today. Talofa, thank you for this question right over here. So what you see wrapped around my waist is called an EA Lava Lava. An EA Lava Lava is mainly used for modesty and respect, and it can be worn both by women and men. Anyways, back to the start of the play. This is an ear lava lava, as my girlfriend says. This traditional wear may be used for formal and informal events. I'll buy your own, see what's come out of it, but drop it like it's hard. As I was saying, this is not a trend like skinny jeans, so if I catch you, I'm gonna throw this.
with McDonald's. Come the fuck on. You can't give us $40 an hour. I'm here busting my ass serving Big Mac. Are you fucking kidding me? Look at the comments. There's no class solidarity at all. We reached the point where workers are supposed to be getting like $30 an hour because of inflation like fucking 50 years ago. So he's kind of right about deserving $40 an hour, but low key, if it's fucking McDonald's, it should be more. It should be more, and he should only have to work a couple amount of hours to earn a decent amount of money. That's how it should be, but you know, you have to work till you fucking die and get paid no money because you're fucking bootlickers in the comments and you don't like when you have money for some reason. You think you're all embarrassed billionaires. You're not. You're fucking exploited. You will always be. Okay, you got me there, but that is not a crime. I want to bring you up to speed on what just happened. Right here in Texas, Governor Abbott's administration has just removed all nine democratically elected members of the school board here in the Houston Independent School District. Now stop. If you don't live here in Houston, I bet you're wondering why should you care? Follow me closely. These school board members are elected officials whose power was stripped from them by the state. This is a trend. In Florida, when a district attorney spoke out against the governor, he was removed from office. In Texas, when you don't play ball with the governor and you won't play ball with banning books, you get removed from office. Why? Because these governor's unpopular policies cannot win in the big cities, they're not stopping with a loss in a local election. All that's happening is that they're engineering new ways to remove the winner from office. No matter where you live or who you vote for, what party you support, this should be alarming because removing elected officials because you don't get your way sets a dangerous precedent. Because trust me when I tell you, if you believe that this is gonna end with down ballot races, well, I got some oceanfront property to sell you in Idaho. Join the union fellow workers and start to live. An old IWW slogan, but how do you become a union man? Or person, I see you out there. Well, if you're planning to start a union, there are a few key steps that you can take. The first is to talk to your coworkers and gauge their interest in unionizing. This can involve discussing the benefits of doing so, better wages and working conditions, and the ability to negotiate with management as a collective bargaining unit. Once you've established interest, then you can reach out to the IWW and tell them all about it. The IWW is a radical labor union that organizes on a grassroots level, meaning that the members themselves organize the union rather than relying on paid staff. This can provide a more democratic and empowering structure for the workers. Together with the IWW, you develop a strategy for organizing your workplace. This could involve delivering flyers, organizing meetings with coworkers, and working to build support for the union. But remember, it's extremely important to prioritize safety and security throughout the process. Because organizing a union can sometimes lead to retaliation, threats, or the loss of your job. And always remember... You will not believe what my aunts did when I gave them a cheeseburger. The government of Florida is actively trying to separate trans kids from their parents. Also, the ants eat the cheeseburger. Fat people doing things. Ba -da -da -da. Fat people doing things. I film all the shit because there's not enough representation of fat people doing stuff. We're boring and basic just like you. But you gotta be all weird about it. Fat people do. so valuable let's sell them no way i'm not collecting them to sell i'm collecting them because they're simple and beautiful and because they make me happy why are you so money hungry i have a question are you gay though no i'm married with two children
Oh, kind of base. Why are you a liberal? What? I don't think people realize how common this is amongst conservatives. They're always shocked to find out that you're advocating for other people and not just like selfish intentions. Like, oh, you're advocating for the LGBTQ community and you're not part of that community? What? That's crazy. I mean, how do you talk to people like this? Like, how do you come to a common ground with someone that's just blinded by selfishness? I mean, I, I don't think it's really possible. I don't. The NHS mistreats trans people because they're underfunded. No, wrong, incorrect. Any discussion of British trans health has to start from the understanding that the NHS is segregated. If a cisgender woman wants hormone replacement therapy for menopause, she can get it from her GP. If a trans woman wants the exact same medicine to transition, she has to go to a segregated gender identity clinic, be interrogated by psychiatrists, diagnosed with gender dysphoria, get a letter of recommendation from an endocrine specialist and take that letter back to the same GP she started with. Jumping through those extra hoops is what takes all the extra time and the same is true for all gender affirming care in the uk it's one rule for cis people and another rule for us other countries like argentina canada and parts of the usa don't do things that way the president of the world professional association of transgender health called the british system outdated and inefficient in 2021 the reason for the delays in british trans health is not because the nhs is underfunded they've spent more money on trans health care in the last few years than ever before but waiting lists are still measured in decades the problem is that the system has been badly designed which prompts the obvious question why don't they simply change the design of the system and the answer to that you can find on philosophy tube Hi, I'm Pepper, and this is another day in my life as a stay-at-home cat. I slept in my mom's desk last night, so she had to bring me back to the bed for morning snuggles. But then I saw my mortal enemy, the bird. I did my morning due diligence, and I yelled at them. Then I took a nap under this blanket because I was cold, but then my mom informed me that another biscuit order came in, so I had to get right to work. Um, if you guys could stop putting in biscuit orders, that would be great. I would really like a day off. Then it was box time, so I started by painting this box. Um, I just pawed it until I feel like I'm done, and then it was time to get into the milk box. This box is my favorite place to decompress, really escape from the world, and just have some time to myself. Uh, in the middle of box time, my mom informed me that it was time to play. We played with a spring, and we played fetch today, and usually I'm very bad at fetch, but I did a good job today, so I got some treats. Unfortunately, the pile of laundry was gone, so I had to take my nap with this seal. And then, in the evening time, my mom tried to play it, but I wasn't really interested. And then I fell asleep in the corner. Good night! Things I do as an adult that I did as a child, too. Trauma Response Edition. I am hypersensitive to the slightest shift of time. Report found that its patients were at considerable risk due to its unquestioning affirmative approach. Oh god, alright, well let's see. Let's see where this is coming from, because of course they don't have After. any like actual sources for any of this, they just make you like type in the keywords. The largest pediatric gen what was this called? This is, um... Gunner Identity Clinic. The Tavistock Center. And what, were the, what was the wording the here? Found that its patients were at considerable risk. Considerable risk. Uh, a damning report into gender identity services run by the Tavistock and Portman Foundation. Trust has found that the model is putting children at considerable risk. Um, an interim report said that children and young people are being subjected to lengthy waits for access to gender dysphoria services and are not receiving support during this time. Wait a minute! Who could have guessed the very thing that they are talking about, where people are being put at considerable risk, is because they're not receiving the care that they need. Not because they are uh, being given care too quickly and not, uh, oh God, this is so fucking stupid. It's literally so easy. You, I, like, I literally just typed in what they said. And the first thing that comes up is the exact opposite. But it doesn't matter because this is all propaganda. It's all they have, it's all they do. That's all they can do because they don't have the facts on their sides. The medical consensus is very clear. And unfortunately they want to go against that.
Black people need to stop complaining about systemic racism and take some personal responsibility. Everyone is equal under the law now. They may be policed more, but that's only because they commit a disproportionate amount of the crime. Why? Well, I'm not saying that black people are naturally more likely to be criminals or anything. I, I just think it's a part of their culture. Why? Well, probably because their dads weren't around to raise them properly. Why? I don't know, probably because they were too poor to afford a kid, so they left. Why? Well, they probably can't get a good job because they never went to college. Why? Well, I guess it is probably because they couldn't afford it, but th they, they didn't get good enough grades to get a scholarship either. Why? Well, I guess that is probably because their school is underfunded. Why? Because school funding is determined by property taxes and they were born into poor areas. Why? Because their family hasn't been able to build enough wealth to move out. Why? Because the first black people who were born with equal rights under the law are less than 60 years old. Oh, I needed that! I needed that too! You're pushing your luck, Scoob! I love women, they are so easy to please. Step one, think of them with everything you do. So picture this, you go to the beach, right? And you find some sea glass. You're gonna take some sea glass, collect it, put it in a little jar. The littler, the cuter, that's it, that's the money. And you're gonna take it to her, okay? Present it to your queen, and she will love it. Next, a little piece of paper, and you're gonna write a cute little note on it, okay? Fill the piece of paper, got it? Don't, don't just fill up the tiny corner, fill it. Say something cute about it that you like. Say something quirky and say something that is unique that you really like about her. Bonus points too if you can think of a cute nickname down in there like Squish, I don't know. You got this. Dear President Brigham, what would you give everybody in the United States? What would you give everybody for free? What's up, little man? What you gonna give us? For free. Food? Food? Man, nah, what's up, comrade? Oh, hell yeah. That's my boy. My boy is on that socialist I shit. What's up, buddy? You tax it, the taxes down a little. But, Brickham, there's one thing they Okay, need well, you need to do something with the taxes. I've seen, but I've seen this country. I've you've seen, seen the country? I've heard about politics. You're 10 days old. I don't care about it. politics. Oh, hell yeah. What's, it's revolution or nothing, baby. <laughs> yeah! Hey, you seem like you're having a bad day. You killed my fucking slug. Your favorite food is cheeseburgers, and I know more Mandarin than you do. You're barely even Asian. Sorry, I'm not Chinese enough for you. But I've never seen you pound back jerk chicken. Last time I checked, Brody twerks better than you, and I liked your poem, but your bars could use a little more work, homie. So really, how black are you then? Excuse me? What? Literally, what? Because if we're going to play that game, let's do it. Oppression Olympics, let's go. You meet my family. I'm sick and tired of hearing that autistic people trigger the uncanny valley, and a lot of you didn't understand what I was trying to say in my last video, so I'm going to explain it in more depth here. Here's the definition of uncanny valley. It is when something looks very similar to being human, but isn't human, and it generates a sense of unease and revulsion. When people are talking about autistic people triggering the uncanny valley, they're usually referring to a study that was done a while ago. The study they're talking about is this one posted to the National Library of Medicine on PubMed, um, and it's about how people can identify autistic people um, without even realizing it within the first few seconds, and that also those people are less inclined to want to socialize with them. That's not disgust, that's not revulsion, that's not hatred, that is simply noticing and not feeling inclined to speak to. I searched the entire study and the word uncanny valley is not in it at all. In fact, the only study that the word uncanny valley is brought up in is this one. It's posted to the same website and it's about whether or not autistic people can even experience the uncanny valley, not trigger it in other people. 
So where is this coming from? It's coming from news reporters who are putting their own spin on it and using Uncanny Valley as a metaphor. And it's a shit metaphor. First off, the biggest problem I have with it is it puts the blame of allistic people's ableism on autistic people. Like it's their fault that they're being ableist. Secondly, it gives permission for allistic people to be ableist. This is not something they are biologically prone to. This is not something ingrained in our DNA that if you are allistic, you are going to hate and see autistic people as not human. That is bullshit. That is ableism. The more we autistic people continue to talk about us triggering the uncanny valley, the more we excuse this, the more we give people a pathway to discriminate against different neurologies. If us officers stay behind you long enough, we can find a reason to pull you over. So you might as well get the out of the way. Some people don't want to talk about politics. They're like, NATO, why do you got to talk about politics? What do politics have to do with me? I'm not an immigrant or a black person or a Muslim or a Jew or a gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender or a woman or an old person or a young person <laughs> or a student or a union member or artist or journalist or a scientist or a public employee. I don't breathe the air or drink the water. I don't live in a coastal region that'll be affected by sea level rise or an arid region that'll be affected by drought or fire. I don't like chocolate, wine, or coffee or other commodities that will no longer be available due to climate change. I'm not mentally ill, pregnant, disabled, or currently being shot at, so... What do politics have to do with me? Like this brings the movement down Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around